So the big question is this, how are little guys like us who are undersized, overpowered, and totally outmuscled, how do we roll in a way that allows us to survive and thrive against the biggest guys in our gym? That's the question, and this channel will give you the answer. My name is Brandon Gross, and welcome to David vs. Goliath BJJ. What's up, Giant Slayers? Brandon here from David vs. Goliath BJJ. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing six tips for beginners. So if you're a white belt, you're brand new, and you're undersized, then keep on watching because this video is for you. All right, guys, so the first tip I have for you is to take care of your body. Make sure you guys are stretching, properly warming up, properly warming down, icing after practice if need be. And don't be that guy who walks into class right after warm-ups are done, accidentally on purpose, because you don't like the fitness aspect or the cardio part of jiu-jitsu. When you're brand new, this is one of the best benefits jiu-jitsu has to offer is that it's gonna make your physical body a lot better shape. And so embrace it, but also don't overdo it, uh, but be sure to take care of your body. Which leads me to tip number two, which is take a moment to ask questions or write your questions down. One of the biggest mistakes I see beginners make is that they don't ask questions and part of the reason is because they don't know what they don't know. So do your best to ask intelligent questions as it relates to something you recently learned or saw. I've personally coached a lot of beginners and I've noticed that some of the ones that progress faster than others are the ones that ask good questions. Good quality questions will lead you to good quality answers. And with that said, don't be ashamed to ask questions because everybody was once where you are. It's okay, you're brand new. Maybe your questions might sound a little bit funny, but just ask. I promise you, your instructor wants to answer those questions. Uh, he's interested in helping you. He's interested in seeing you progress. And if you don't feel comfortable asking the questions, maybe during the middle of class, then ask one of the higher belts on the side or ask your instructor after class. But when you're brand new, again, I definitely recommend asking a lot of questions. And that leads me to tip number three, which is to make friends at your gym. Your training partners, your peers, your instructors, they're gonna be a lot more likely to wanna help you if they like you. So make friends while you're there and don't let it just be about jujitsu. Jujitsu is the best way to connect with people because you're, you know, you're there, you're all doing it together, but you know, ask them questions about their family or their kids or what else they'd like to do off the mats to connect with them. Uh, but the point is you guys make friends at the gym. Looking back on my jujitsu journey, that's one of the things that helped me progress a lot faster than others and actually helped me stick around for the long run was making a lot of friends and also just having those little conversations with my instructor after class uh, when I was staying to help clean the mats. And for me, that's what caused the gym to be like my second home was because my family was there. I, they weren't just training partners anymore. They were friends and family. These are people I actually cared about and that actually cared about me and my success as well. Which leads me to tip number four, which is to watch and emulate guys who have a similar body type as you. For example, if you're like me and you're a little bit shorter and stockier, try to emulate some of your instructors or hired training partners that are shorter and stockier. Maybe you're shorter and you have longer legs, then pick somebody who has a similar body type like that. Modeling your game after somebody who's already done it, who has the same body type as you, will not only give you a sense of direction on your training progress, but it'll also help you shorten the learning curve. Over the last 13 years in my journey, I've had different size instructors, different guys who play different styles and body types, but I made it a point to pick out uh, two of my instructors that I really uh, still keep in touch with today, who've been huge role models and mentors to me. Uh, and they have similar body types and styles of jujitsu, so I could emulate my game after, ask them, again, good questions, and really craft or model my game after somebody who already had it together. And so again, tip number four, you guys, is try to watch and emulate people who have the same body type as you do. And that leads me to tip number five, you guys, which is to take notes. Now, I'm not sure how you learn best. Everybody learns differently. I'm more of a visual person. Uh, I know a lot of people who like to take notes uh, in a marble notebook or, you know, on you know, just pen and paper. Um, I did that for a really long time, and that did help me remember uh, but with the advancement in technology and smartphones nowadays, I'd much rather film and record. Um, a lot of times in the gym, your instructor may not want you to film directly, um, but I would recommend after class, you know, grabbing a partner on the side and performing the move and drilling yourselves doing it. So that way, at least you have a record of what you learned during class at night. But the point is, you guys, to take notes, so that way it'll really help you in the long run uh, with retention and muscle memory and actually remembering the moves. You know, I see a lot of white belts, they come in one week, they learn a cool move, uh, by the next week they completely forget it. But it's those who really take the time to review and study their notes that really see noticeable difference in their game. And that leads me to tip number six, you guys, which is don't be afraid to ask higher belts to roll. A lot of times when you're first starting off, it's gonna be a natural tendency to wanna gravitate towards somebody who has the same color belt as you, or to train with a beginner. And there are some benefits to this, but in my experience, injuries happen more often when you're rolling with a fresh white belt uh, who's just like you, opposed to rolling with a high rank belt. And the reason why is because they have a lot of experience, they know what to expect, they're not gonna spaz out on you. 
If they have you in a submission, they're not gonna crank it because they know they have it. And you're gonna learn so much more from your mistakes and from getting caught by higher belts as you will from, from maybe beating up on another white belt who didn't know what they're doing. Sure, that might feel good in the moment, but as the old saying goes, when you succeed, you party. When you fail, you ponder. So while rolling with those higher belts, you're gonna, you're gonna fail a lot, you're gonna lose. And that's gonna cause you to ask more questions, to go back to the drawing board, and that's gonna help you to be the best you. Try to pick out one of the higher belts who you know is a nice guy or, or is willing to help you, or even ask them to start from a certain position or ask them a specific question as it relates to what you're trying to work on. I promise you guys the higher belts will respect the fact that you took the time to ask them as that takes a lot of courage. It shows your humility and your willingness to learn. And lastly guys, as a bonus, learn the fundamentals. Stop asking your instructor how to barambolo, how to heel hook, how to do a barata plata or the latest cool move that you saw on Instagram. Learn the fundamentals and learn them well. Just try to choose a school that has a really good fundamentals program or an instructor who really knows how to teach you the basics. So again guys, learn the fundamentals and master the basics. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give that like button a slap and a fist bump. And let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions or suggestions on future video topics. And if you guys want more videos on how to survive and thrive against the biggest guys in your gym, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you stay in the loop choke and you don't miss out on weekly videos. Thanks for watching, guys. And remember, victory always tastes better when you're the underdog.